A family is depicted at the beginning of the film, with a man in a wheelchair. A flashback shows the year 1963 in Cambridge, England. In addition, two little boys are competing in a bicycle race. One of them has optical spectacles on, he is the primary character, Stephen Hawking. They then enter a club where two ladies arrive. Jane, the second primary character, is a young woman. When Stephen sees Jane, he says, hello, to her as she walks away. Then Jane inquires, who are you? Stephen responds, cosmologist. What is it, she wonders. He responds that it is the religion category for the astute atheist. Then Jane inquires, what is the worship of cosmologist? Stephen responds, there is only one unifying equation. It describes every existing object in this world. Then Jane is about to go and says, nice to meet you. I hope you received your equation. And she bids farewell. Then a class appears on the scene, with the professor conversing with the pupils. Professor responds, you're on your way to getting your doctorate. All sitting pupils receive the question paper for the professor's solution. Following that, all pupils leave the area. Stephen awakens in the afternoon the following day. Stephen's companion inquires, how many questions have you answered? However, Stephen has not answered a single question. Stephen, his friend inquires, do you truly want to acquire a PhD in physics from a prestigious English university? And he gives a nice response. His companion walks away after saying it. Stephen gets out of bed as his companion departs. He like music and hence plays it and he begins reading the professor's assigned question. Suddenly, his hand comes into contact with the dropped cup. As a result, several of his papers are ruined. Professor returns to the classroom. While Stephen arrives late, all of the pupils are already seated. He apologizes for entering. Everyone's work is being reviewed by the professor. Stephen, in turn, hands over his work to professor, which is answered on cards. Stephen claims that he has only answered nine questions. Everyone is taken aback when his pal says, nine. After reviewing the answers to the questions, the professor replies, bravo. The professor then takes Stefan inside a laboratory and explains him that it is the same laboratory where J.J. Thompson discovered the electron and Rutherford split the atom. And, on Friday, I'll be taking some graduates to London on merit. If you're interested, you can accompany me. And they'll all be there to see mathematician Roger Penrose. Stephen is now pictured sitting alone outside the church where Jane goes. During their talk, he invites Jane out to lunch. Jane pays a visit to Stephen's home, where his entire family is present. Stephen's father inquires, are you studying these days? Then she says, I'm studying arts. Then Stephen and Jane talk about when stars were created. When will they come to an end? They all produce UV radiation. All stars would have vanished if ultraviolet light was visible in the sky. Stephen and Jane talk about science, which she enjoys. Then the fireworks begin. And Stephen says with delight, wow. Jane replies, looking at the balloons in the sky, before everything, there was only heaven and an unformed earth. There was also a lot of darkness. Stephen stumbles as he climbs the stairs to meet the boys at a location the next morning. But, keeping his cool, he moves to train. And the professor is giving a lecture there. Stephen is paying close attention to this presentation and is deep in contemplation. After class, Stephen stares at his coffee cup and wonders, what will happen if black hole theory is applied to the universe? I'm taken aback by it. Stephen and Jane talk about it the next morning. If Einstein and the theory of general relativity are right, this world is growing. This world will be smaller if time is reversed. If I reverse the entire procedure, I can see what would have happened with the time itself. Stephen is now shown with the lecturer, sketching something on the chalkboard about the space-time singularity. This world was created by the bursting of a black hole, according to Stephen. He steps outside. He stumbles and almost falls down while walking. The climax of Stephen's narrative begins here. A doctor is caring for Stephen. Stephen is said to have motor neuron disease. According to the doctor, it is an infectious neurological condition. 
It damages all brain cells that control human muscular function such as speaking, walking, swelling, and breathing. It must be transported from the brain. However, the muscles eventually deteriorate and lose control. And the survival period is only two years. Stephen is silent in dread and trouble at hearing it. And Stephen, terrified, says, what do you say about brain? According to the doctor, there is no negative impact on the brain. Your thoughts will not change. After apologizing, the doctor leaves him alone. Because Stephen's life is a tragedy. Stephen's pals and Jane learn about his illness. Stephen starts avoiding everyone who isn't meeting them. Finally, Jane pays him a visit and tells him, I want to live with you forever, without any separation. Stephen is now walking with a support stick. He enters the classroom with a smile and the phrase, time. Jane schedules a visit with Stephen's doctor, who informs her that Stephen has a limited time to live. But Jane promises that they would tackle this cancer together. Despite the fact that she knows Stephen will die, she accepts him cheerfully. They are also married. Stephen's walking and talking are becoming more difficult as time passes. Because that neurological condition has a severe impact. However, he continues to attend his university. He needs to do something with his life. He now carries two sticks. Professor greets him with the understanding that he is intelligent, brilliant, and exceptional. This research is actually about black holes. Stephen has introduced the black hole idea. Professors describe black hole theory as amazing. They inquire, what is the next step? According to Stephen, the next step is to prove it with a single equation because time has a beginning. There is only one simple elegant equation that is required to verify and explain everything. Stephen's condition is deteriorating with time. Jane is now arranging for Stephen to use a wheelchair. Stephen consoles himself by telling Jane that it is only temporary. Jane responds, of course. Jane is in charge of Stephen. Jane is assisting Stephen in putting on his sweater when she abruptly shifts her attention to her second child. His jumper has become entangled on his head. And there's a fire going in the front fireplace. He sees flames through that jumper's hole, which sparks an idea in his mind. Jane transports Stephen in his wheelchair to university the next morning, where he gives a talk to a large group of teachers. Some particles, he claims, avoid a black hole. Black holes are not actually black. Because they glow in response to heat radiations. Hearing it, the instructors are taken aback. Stephen explains, first, a star has vanished into a black hole. And the black hole itself has vanished. A professor catches this concept and dismisses it as rubbish. Hearing Stephen, some professors leave the room. They dismiss this concept. Another professor approaches and introduces himself. Honestly speaking, he says, I'm here to hear rubbish and to expect it. But I will acknowledge that Stephen was correct. Everyone happily claps their hands. Stephen is well known for his theory, as his book, Hawking Radiation, has been released. Jane now spends time in depression as a result of her burden. And she has too much responsibility for Hawking. Stephen's father says, I have supported your decision. However, you will require the assistance of a caregiver at home. You will have to do that in exchange for your support. You've become well known all around the world. Stephen informs Jane that he has been invited to the opera in Bordeaux. Stephen walks away. He is much honored, and while sitting at a seminar, he coughs up blood. A stretcher is quickly dispatched to transport Stephen to the hospital. He enters a state of protracted unconsciousness. Doctor says, I'm not sure how he'll survive his life. There will have to be a gap in his neck for his benefit. It will be passed down the throat. But he will never be able to communicate. Jane agrees, stating that Stephen must survive. Stephen is being operated on, but he is unable to speak. Jane hires a caregiver for Stephen. Stephen is now asking the same caretaker questions using a spelling board so he can answer by blinking his eyes. Stephen is eventually understood by the caretaker. She informs Jane that he is intelligent and an excellent patient. You are quite fortunate. Stephen is presently awaiting the arrival of the next wheelchair. It is also supposed to be adjustable in height. 
It can also read alphabets. Professor Hawking can write four words per minute using this technique. Another benefit is that it can turn written words into speech. Stephen's communication issue has now been rectified as well. He informs Jane, I'm going to write a book called, Time, using this system. Now he asks himself questions such, what is the nature of time? Will it be over soon? Can we go back in time? All of these questions will be answered for us one day. Because the earth revolves around the sun. Only the passage of time will reveal. Stephen is still working and clicking while writing. A Brief History of Time is the title of his book. Then he says, I've been looking for the universe model for a long time. And I eventually looked for it. Because of his hilarious disposition, he also smiles in his crippled life. Stephen's second book, Brief History of Time, has also been released. Stephen is a scientist at the pinnacle of his career. The entire press corps has gathered around his wheelchair. Alan, the caretaker, is also present and takes care of him. There is no limit to the universe or to the efforts of humans. Individual differences exist. Even when life appears to be the worst it can be, there is always something that leads us to success. We are capable of success. There is hope as long as there is life. The hall begins to echo with the clapping sound upon hearing it. Stephen is now at home with his family. And Professor Stephen is addressed honorably. Congratulations, Jane says to Stephen. It's a very remarkable day. Because he is at home with his family. Professor Stephen Hawking's entire life is presented in flashback. The conclusion states that 10 million copies of Brief History of Time were sold worldwide. Stephen Hawking, who is now 72 years old, has no plans to stop working. He continues to look for the theory of everything.